everybody welcome back to my channel today's video is the latest installment in my a to z of fun fold card series we're on the letter b so today we're going to be creating this bridge fold card now this is a really simple card to make it does fold flap postage and then when it stands up it stands freely by itself and although this is really simple to make it's very easy to build on this to make even more fancy cards so if we do a round two of this series we'll be building on this one at a later date but we're keeping it simple today and we're just going to do the basic card so before I get into the video, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you'd hit the subscribe button and help my channel grow. And if you enjoyed today's video or find it useful, please remember to hit the thumbs up button. Now there is a hashtag running alongside this series if you want to join in and hashtag A to Z of Funfold Cards, which you can use on social media or you can equally tag myself because it'd be great to see what you're making if you are following along. So without further ado, let me show you how to make this beautiful bridge fold card. For today's card, I'm going to be using tonic cardstock as the base for my card. I have Gardener's Delight by Craft Consortium for my patterned papers. I've also pulled out the coordinating cardstock that goes with the collection because I really like the earthy tones and I'm using those for my mats and layers. I then have this really beautiful matte blue mirror card. This is by Dovecraft and it's from their tropical pack. And then I have this, this is just from my stash. Um, this is a piece of basically paper, but it looks like water. And because I want to try and make the card look like a pond again, I thought that was a really good shout. Now, there will be a blog post that goes alongside this video. You can find it in the description box of this video. And if you click on the link, it will take you to the blog post with all the measurements you need to make this card. I will give them to you in just a second, but to save you sitting there trying to scribble out instructions while you're watching, I just think it's easier if I link the blog post with the video to make it easier for you. So to give you some measurements, the card base is 10 inches by 6 inches um, then you need four pieces that measure one and a quarter by five and three quarters that's for your patterned paper your layer for underneath your patterned paper measures one and three eighths by five and seven eighths so you need four of those the mirror card this will be in the middle this measures three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths and then the water piece that measures three and three quarters by five and three quarters so originally i would have got some measurements from becky's place the a to z of card folds um, i'll link that in the description box as well but then i've kind of tweaked it and played with it and come up with what i'm going to show you today so on your card base we need to do some scoring so if you put it on your scoreboard with the 10 inch um, side along the top, we're going to score at one and a half. We are going to score at three. This is all in inches. We are going to score at seven. And lastly, we're going to score at eight and a half. And that's all the scoring we actually need to do. So now we can fold and burnish our score lines. So we'll start with the right hand side. This very first piece. You're going to fold into a mountain fold 
Then the next score line, next to the big middle piece, we're going to do as a valley. We're going to do the same with these ones. So we're going to make a mountain fold from the first one. And then the score line nearest the middle, we're going to do as a valley fold. And that is your card base. So really quickly off camera, what I'm going to do now is take one piece of the patterned paper and one piece of the coordinated cardstock and I'm going to attach them together and I'm going to do that for all the pieces then I'll come back now my mats and layers are all done I can go ahead and attach them onto my card base now what I did notice with the last card was that the glue has slightly warped the card base I don't know if you can see but it's very bumpy and a little bit warped so what I thought I would do this time is try tape on the back instead and hope that that doesn't warp it as much so I'm going to try it and see this is a tape I haven't used before I won this tape so I also really wanted to give it a go and see what it was like as you can see, when I stuck the pattern paper onto the coordinating cardstock, I've left a slight border all the way around, and that's going to follow through onto the green base. So let's get you on high speed. I'll show you where these go, and then we'll come back to do the rest. now our mats and layers are in place it's time to do the center of the card so what i'm going to do really quickly is attach the water onto the mirror card leaving a small border and then i'm going to attach that to the center of the card so once i've done that i'll come right back to you so that's all now in place and drying nicely so it's time to decorate the inside I've already fussy cut the lily pad sheet from the Garden is Delight paper pad and I'm going to use these lilies to decorate the inside of my card and hopefully make it look like a pond. So I will put you on high speed while I get these attached into place where I want them and then we will see where we're at when I'm done. So as you can see our lily pond has taken shape, I think it looks really pretty. So all that's left is to attach a sentiment and maybe a little bit of decoration to the front here. I mean you could leave it like that, but I actually think I'd quite like to add something else. So what I have are the chipboard shapes from the collection. 
and I really like this little goose I think he's really really cute and I kind of see him going here as if he's going to jump in the pond and either take a fish or have a swim so I think I'm going to put him on there now these are self-adhesive as well which is fantastic I'm just going to pop him on here like this and what I'm going to do in a second is just go and grab my anti-static bag because obviously his head is slightly overhanging the card and his head is sticky also and what I don't want to do is have his head catch on to any part of the card and stick it all together because that would be disastrous so let's grab the anti-static bag and give his head a little bit of a dusting if you don't have an anti-static bag you could use talcum powder or even just tap a sleeve or something against the head hasn't taken much but that's now stick free and all that's left to do is to attach a sentiment so i've got a few different ones from my stash here and i'm just going to see which one I like the best now because my goose is on this side I think I want the sentiment this side and I kind of like them to be in the middle I've got that one that's quite good it's kind of feeds into the pond theme but I just think it looks a little bit young for the pond or I could just go with with love Either way, it's going to open out like that. Just try this one. I actually quite like the Celebrate. But I feel like that needs to be matted onto something. So I'm going to grab some scraps from my coordinating cardstock this earthy tones one and see if I can just map that onto the earthy tones so I've actually used up all of this nice earthy tone but I have got this nice mossy green colored piece which I think that would work quite well as well we have the light and now I think the dark side so let me get this matted onto the green and then I'll come back Okay, there we go. So that's now been mounted onto the green cardstock. I've slightly rounded off all of the corners because this topper had slightly rounded off corners. I think that looks really cute. And I'm going to put it straight in the middle here. And I'm going to put the glue on this side only. In fact, let's use the tape. All that's left now is to create a space to put a message so if we flip the card over we're going to put some white card on the back here this measures three and three quarters by five and seven eighths and it will fit really nicely just on the back there so i'm going to get that in here down and then i'll be right back and that's the finished card i'm really really pleased with how this has come out i think it's absolutely perfect for a masculine make one thing I did want to add was if you are going to be giving this to someone, you might want to stamp your sentiment before you adhere the white card to the back of the card base. Um, I don't know who this is for yet, which is why I didn't do that. However, it is advisable to stamp before you adhere it down just because it gets a bit tricky otherwise. But apart from that, really, really pleased with how this has come out. It stands up nicely on its own and even if you have it like that, it's still an attractive card. So let me know what you think in comments. Did you like the card? Is it one you're going to give a go? I'm really pleased with it. Thank you so, so much for watching today. I really appreciate everyone who takes the time out of the day to watch my videos. If you're not already subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button and help my channel grow. And if you've enjoyed today's video, please also give it a massive thumbs up. 
I will be back soon with more videos so until next time thank you once again for watching take care and I'll see you soon bye for now